Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. Angela Wolf here, Brother Brand Ambassador. And do we have a fun show for you today? So we are going to keep our fingers crossed that the internet works today because it is blowing and storming like crazy out there. <laughs> but I'm glad I'm in here. All right. So we've got Brenda and Jane joining us. And if you've been following them the last few months when they come on, number one, they make a great team. But number two, they are making our kitchen look fabulous. Now, you can use this for more than kitchen items, but it's very cool. So we are live today and we are live streaming on Brother Sewing and Crafting YouTube and Facebook pages. So I can see all of your comments. We'll see your questions rolling in. And if you've never been here before, the routine is say hi, say where you're from. You never know, your neighbor might be sewing next to you or crafting. So let's bring Brenda and Jane to the party. Hello, hello. Hi, hi everyone. Hello. So I gave them a little teaser about what you're showing, but everyone who's been watching the past, and also if you're new to this, you can go back on YouTube or Facebook and go back to the previous episodes if you wanted to watch this whole kitchen come together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so girls, what are we going to be showing today? So today we are, you know, showing a few things, but our project, if you will, is, I don't know if you can see it, Oh. But it is a um, a uh, towel. Help me out, Jane. I have so, suddenly <laughs> went blank. But we have uh, taken and designed this towel topper in the design center, stitched it out, and then just added a towel. This is a built-in embroidery um, design from the Luminaire. So we've done that. And we've just uh, made a few of these different towels and um have fun decorating them in different ways, which we'll share those with you as we go along. And I'm Brenda. That is really, really, really cute, by the way. I used to have those where they were all crocheted. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how they're sewn because I think that would be uh, a lot faster. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a lot faster too when you have the, um, make them in my design center to bring it over to embroidery and do the stitch out. It's a lot easier than going on to the sewing side of the machine and stitching them out. I agree. So I know a lot of people watching, a lot have the Luminaire, a lot don't. A lot have machines that have my design center, but the good news is that you can sew this no matter what because you guys are going to be featuring a few other things that we haven't seen in a while. Yes. Yes. Yeah, we're going to well, talk about the buttonhole foot and the button attachment foot, and then we're going to talk a little bit about some embellishments that you can do with the bi-level foot at the end. Awesome. Hey, thanks, Barb. <laughs> Everybody's saying hello to us. Hello to us. So which one of you would like to kick this off? I'm very excited well, about I'll that. Go, I'll go over to the machine real quickly and be right with you at uh, showing you how we've kind of started putting this together. Sounds good. See you in a second. All right. Well, she's moving on over. Your room looks beautiful as always. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I there was so much sunshine that I had to hang a, a quilt on the window so that I wouldn't be so whitewashed. Oh, I'll take <laughs> so you're getting all the wind, but uh, uh, for some reason, we're I'm having beautiful weather here. I don't know what happened. <laughs> That's fantastic. So I see uh, Brenda is. Let me just uh, take this comment down. Sorry about that, uh, Brenda. I see you. There you are. Hi there. Okay, so I'm at the machine, the design, uh, and what we're going to do quickly is I'm going to take you into the design center. Whoops, I should use the right end. And then in the design center, we took and designed the um, topper pattern out of shapes that are built into the design center. So I'll bring up the first one that we're going to add. Get it here on screen, and I'm going to enlarge this just a little bit. Oops, that's too much. You can't really see it, so let, we'll just leave it where it is. And then the next thing I want to do, and you can do this. You can you hear me? Okay, everyone. Yes, that looks like a rocket. <laughs> you can add a fill, um, or you can stitch it out plain. You'll see our samples are done both ways. I'll go ahead and just add a fill for fun. So in your fields, of course, you have the meandering, but let's see, if we choose this and open up this, we have like 42 different ones to choose from. And this was fall, the one I made, I just, I think I just chose some leaves somewhere, but I'm just gonna choose this first one and go okay. And then I'm gonna just pick any color that's brighter, darker, so that I can see it later when we're 
over at the embroidery and designing with it and stuff. So I've got my fill chosen and now I want to fill the inside of my design. So I'm going to choose that bucket and then I'm just going to touch anywhere in that design and it just populates the fill that we've chosen. The next thing, just choose next. <laughs> next thing, choose next. Now in this next screen, because that's a pretty dense um, stitching, I'm gonna go ahead and just increase, whoops, you know, I like my finger better. The um, <laughs> size to about 150, because I wanted it not quite so dense, and choose okay. There's other things you can do there, but you can see how that has, you know, loosened up the design. And I, I mean, you could even go a little bit more. Isn't gonna matter here today though. Then once you're happy with your design, go ahead and set it in OK. And now it's opened up in embroidery. The first thing I'm gonna do is go up here to edit. <clears throat> and then I'm just gonna go move. And what I wanna do is go ahead and center my design. Make sure it's in the center of my hoop. So choose just the center dot here and, and that'll center the design for you and OK. Now I want to add a design. So I'm going to choose Add and back in to my Design Center. Go ahead and go to your pocket. Open up your Save Designs there. This time I want to choose the second one. You'll notice this first one had a line at the bottom. That means when it stitches, it's going to stitch clear around our little in the hoop Tal, um, um, topper uh, pattern. This next one's open. Let's bring that one in and OK. Now on this one, um, I'm just going to go ahead and choose a single stitch here and a different color. Let's choose this whatever color that is, kind of a pink red red color. So now I want to, did I, whoops, let me go back one. <laughs> um, do the fill bucket, uh, the fill again, and now touch anywhere on that line. So this line is now red, plus it's changed to the um, double stitch out there, the, the two line one. So now next, and I'm ready to go ahead and set this. So take it to embroidery. Now we have both designs in there, but the first thing we want to do is again, take and center that design we brought in. Now they're on top of each other. And I'll show you that here in a second. When I go into embroidery, you can see my three steps. So first we have that fill, then we have the second out, or the outline from the first that stitches, and then that's our very last, um, uh, stitching and that's going to stitch our designs together. But I'm going to let Jane go ahead and show you how she has some uh, step outs some samples kind of to show you how this went together because we're not going to take all day and stitch it for you. <laughs> Although we have all day. So Jane, what do you have well, for us? that's true. Okay, it's windy so there. I we might as well stay in and stitch. I agree. <laughs> So what I did is just gave a couple of examples of how we're going to just, this is the first one that was brought up and you can see how the stitching all around the outside of this and see there's the bottom line for this first one. The reason why you want this bottom line here is so that the fill doesn't um, spill over to the outside of the hoop, right? So that you can bring in a fill or in this case, I just left it plain. And so this one would stitch out first. Then before the second stitch out, you would bring in your fabric. Now what I did to prepare my fabric is I put um, a iron on uh, stabilizer on the back of it, just to make the fabric a little bit sturdier um, for, depending on the fabric that you're using too. So for this case, it's just cotton fabric. I chose to use a little bit of um, fusible stabilizer to make it a little um, heavier. So then you put those right sides together, right? And you align those. Now this next one, you're going to stitch this next outline. But see, this one doesn't have the stitch 
stitching on the bottom. Now, why is that? Because you need to be able to flip this right side out, right? So you need to have an opening. Excuse me, my sample <laughs> disappeared. All right, so this one is the last one and you can see the opening. And then there's the stitching around the outside edge. I use the pinking shears and cut close to the edge. Now you're gonna flip this out, right? So I uh, flip the right side out, right? And then use whatever tool you prefer to get your edges nice and smooth. And then you're gonna iron. Now what I have found is that when I iron these the bottom, I like to press it up on either side and give it a little press about a half an inch. Now the thing that I, you know, you can, I've done this both ways and I just find that it's more accurate after you've inserted your towel that if you have both sides pressed, in about a half an inch so that they're on top of each other then the back when you sew it is going to be aligned right so what you're going to do is you're going to take a towel and you um depending on the size of your towel now you can go to many stores and i have because i've <laughs> i just got a little carried away stitching these because it's so fast and such a cute little <laughs> gift to give away so uh, then I just cut it in half. Now you can use your pinking shears for this as well. Here I just um, ironed it, give it a press, put my ruler on there and with the rotary, gave it a quick cut across. Now with this, I would then insert, you know, so this one is pressed in thirds. You can choose to gather this into this, um, amount here. But when I designed this in my design center, I actually measured what it would be approximately from here to here. And that's how I decided on the size that I actually made in um, my design center. So once again, you insert it, you have these all pressed nicely so that when you top stitch it, it's going to be um, catching this bottom one real nicely. So pin, top stitch, and then after that, we're going to go into putting on the buttonhole. Oh my gosh, that you make that sound so easy, Jane. And I see there are a couple questions in here, which I will get back to, but um, okay. not part of your question, but actually for Brenda, and I know, I think you're already on to a different step, so we might have to go to this later, but she wanted, uh, a couple people were asking, where did you get those shapes? Or could you give the approximate dimensions if somebody wanted to just trace those out? Well, there's a couple of different ways, right? You can, if you had a paper design, you could scan that in that paper shape into my design center. Mm -hmm. But what I did is I took an oval and a um, octagon shape, combined those into what the topper is. Oh, perfect. Can you yeah. just hold that up one more time so they can see the... Yes. There you, I th still think it looks like a rocket, but... <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Very I thought it looked like a paintbrush when I was looking at the pattern. <laughs> hey, if you flip it over, it does look like a paintbrush. <laughs> so, Brenda, what do you have on your screen? So, um, actually, Jane, do you want to go ahead and just show that uh, buttonhole foot and button yes. while, while you're still there on camera? Yes, you're right. Okay, so this is the button um, buttonhole foot for the luminaire. Now, here is where you would place your button. The um, machine recognizes these dots on the top and also recognizes this A plus that's on here, okay? So the machine recognizes these um, positioning marks and will then make the button um, hold the size that is the, the size of this button. And it's, I don't know how it does it, but it does an amazing job. You can see here that there's these crosshair markings on here. So you would place 
a marking chalk um, or the heat resistant marks or however you want to mark it. Just do a little crosshairs on your on your um, where you want the buttonhole to start and then a line down. So you have crosshairs here and then start down because when this buttonhole starts to sew, it starts sewing close to you and then and then goes back, right? So depending on the fabric that you are stitching this on, and I suggest uh, stitching it out on a sample just so that you can see how your stitching is gonna um, look like and what the buttonhole you choose because um, there's several that you can choose from. So then uh, you can see what it's gonna look like before it goes on to your actual project. That's really nice. Can you just hold up a finish? Let me see what that, hold on. Sorry about the echo. Could you just hold that up one more time, Jane, just so they can see the finished product? The, the. Your uh, towel. Okay. So here's one of the hints that I was gonna talk about afterwards, is that if you're working on black fabric and then you have black thread, it's a little hard to see. So if you put a little bit of stabilizer on there, then when you go to cut your hole in your buttonhole, you're gonna be able to see that a lot better than if it was black on black, right? But, so this is what it actually looks like. That's a really, <sighs> sorry. That's a really good tip, by the way, Jane. I'm sorry? That's a really good tip. What kind of stabilizer did you use? I just used a tear away, just a medium tear away. And, and this is a good way of, uh, if you have some scraps of your tear away, just have a little um, drawer or folder or something with your mm -hmm. um, scrap stabilizer so that you can do little things like this. Or uh, if you were putting on a, um, like if you was doing uh, applique, you know, you only need little spots of it, right, to um, to do your applique if it's a small piece. So just have a little folder with your little scraps and you can uh, use, and this is a good way of using them. Great idea. All right, Brenda, I'm going to bring you back up. Really, you are very welcome, by the way. I got you covered. She wanted to know what we were making. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, thanks for showing the buttonhole foot, Jane. Uh, because I already have mine installed on the machine. Uh, but first, before we get over to sewing on a button, I thought I'd share with you some of the things like in the machine because it's actually very, very helpful. Well, first, of course, where to find those buttonholes and it's just in your utility stitches and it's category four. So we'll stitch on that category. And as you can see, there's several, but Okay, so how do you use this foot? How do you do it? Maybe um, you're new at sewing. This has a great resource. I was checking it out the other day. So go up here to your little um, question mark, your movie theater, huh? And then I'm gonna go into sewing guide and you'll see right here, buttonhole. Push on buttonhole and up comes these different buttonholes. Well, this is really cool because, okay, what, am, what are you sewing your button on? So this talks about this is thin and medium fabric, stretch fabrics, jeans, trousers, whatever, thick coats. So today I'm just on kind of a medium fabric. So I'm going to go ahead and choose this 4-07. Now it's going to go through talking about marking your position and the buttonhole, the button holder plate. Um, so if you're needing to figure this attachment out and you've maybe using it for the first time or haven't used it for a few months or whatever, you can go back to this. It's, it's built into your machine. So we're going to go through this. I'm going to get out of here. Oh, one other thing is, let me get here, in videos. If I go to videos, there's accessories. There's one on the buttonhole foot. So if you want to watch a movie, grab the popcorn and you can watch the buttonhole foot. <laughs> I'll bet you there's a lot of people that are like, I didn't even know that was on there. How cool is that? Yeah, so here's the really cool thing. Remember when we were in that health menu, I was I chose uh, buttonhole 4-07. 
when I came back to my screen, look, it's the buttonhole that's already up on. It knows that I want to use it because I chose chose it in the help menu. So that was really cool. The other wow, thing is cool. more information. I mean, obviously, it tells you your foot to use, but it also tells you right here, this is a narrow squared buttonhole. And then like if I were to choose other ones, it will tell me exactly a squared buttonhole and whoops. And then this one's the wide round ended buttonhole and such. So I'm gonna go back to that. Uh, actually, I'm gonna use the, this one is the wide squared. I'm gonna go ahead and use that one. It might be easier to see on camera. Um, <clears throat> so I think it's actually time to go ahead and sew this button on. So I'm gonna slide my camera over to the machine so that you can see it. Take you for a little ride here. Okay, let me go ahead um, and, and line this up under, uh, get this up here. Can we see everything all right, ladies? That looks great. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I've got the buttonhole on, or, or the buttonhole foot on, and you notice, Again, uh, Jane was talking about these markings. These are markings that the machine recognizes. By the way, to put this buttonhole uh, foot on, it snaps on and off just like your other um, feet on your machine. So it's not difficult at all. I'm gonna raise the presser foot lever and I am going to slide my fabric under here. I just have two layers of fabric with a little bit of batting there, so. I'm gonna slide this under. The slide's right under here. Whoops. Okay. So what I'm looking for, I have marked. I'm gonna. Whoops. I'm gonna pull this out so you can see it before I put it under. I have just marked my fabric. I'm gonna bring my red line on my buttonhole foot right up to this line. Just match it up right there. And maybe I'll do it the long way. Um, match it up to this one and when it I'm going to line up the red lines here Let's get this so you can see it and when it starts stitching it's going to stitch down this way first and then uh, stop and do its double you know zigzag there and, and and stitch back so just be just be aware of that because sometimes it can surprise especially a new sewer thinking it's going to sew down here but it actually is going back it's going to, it knows exactly the size of the buttonhole I need because I have placed a button, the button that I'm use, um, using on my project right there in the buttonhole foot. So it's kind of its guide, if you will. So next, let's go ahead and slide this fabric right under here. I'll get this lined up. You know, with a camera and sitting to the side, it's really hard to um, <clears throat> see. So I might get in your way just for a moment. But I kind of on. You have to love the live shows, Brenda. You're kind of like balanced over yeah. everything. You still have to. You better sew straight because everyone will notice that. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh! Um, I you know I can hardly sew straight on regular day. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> but but. <clears throat> sitting to the side two feet and and um you know behind it and everything and stretching your arms is you know almost impossible but that's okay you guys still get the idea all right let's put our foot down now one other thing before we start sewing this that i wanted to share with you is <clears throat> on these buttonholes they'll come up with a width and they'll uh, come up uh, with a length of stitch, but it is adjustable. And so I just want to share this little thing that I stitched out. We'll see if you can see it. So right here, this is one um, one of the one of the square buttonholes. This is stitched at default, which is um, I don't know a 0.4 millimeter. And then on this next one down, I lightened up the woo. There we go. I lightened up the density. On this one, I made it denser. So you have that control to um, change the from the default. And I did that on a second one too. So if you're doing something where you wanted a little tighter stitching, you can just make it denser. But if you want to lighten it up, because sometimes I really like the, light, uh, the look of the lighter one. <coughs> okay. 
We're all set up. I've lined up. I've lined up my uh, marked line with the red lines on the buttonhole. And yes, I've got thread in now. <laughs> and so let's go ahead and start stitching this button. Oh. Are there any questions, Angela? No, Even I think though they won't take long. <laughs> Everybody's just like watching. What a great camera. It's always feels. fun to watch the machine run, right? <laughs> Yeah, because you know, Brenda, I would love to know from all the brother fans watching uh, in the old days, now I'm talking like 25 years ago, how many of you loved sewing buttonholes? We would run from that. But now this foot makes it so easy. You can do buttonholes on sheer fabrics, knits. It's, it, it's just wonderful. It doesn't stretch the fabric out. It's just amazing. I can and it love does it automatically. It automatically goes all through your steps because I know on the old machines you would click to one and it would stitch right. out that portion and then it would you click to the next step. It would it would stitch out that one and you would just go through these. This does the whole button hole at the at at once. Yeah. Absolutely. And I wasn't even watching the machine. I was watching my monitor or the you know you guys uh, uh so it's, and I noticed that someone said it's so quiet and it is, I was sitting here thinking, man, this machine is so quiet. <laughs> I think, yeah, there it is. Our set said that. So it is such a quiet machine. So now that the buttonhole is stitched, I know that Jean touched on this, but I'll just share it. I'm going to pop a pin in here real fast. And actually I'm turning it to the backside because you can see the color back there a little bit better. Everybody's saying so, it's so quiet. I popped a pin in there. As soon as my camera decides to focus here, we'll be good. Can we see it okay? Just barely. Yeah, I'm kind of getting a glare. I kind of see that. I'm sorry about that. Anyhow, I have a pin right at the end of the stitching. So now if I take, a, I mean, I've just always used my seam ripper because, you know, we all have one. Um, it's kind of an insurance policy. <laughs> Use it when you need it. But, um, and I've always slit my buttonholes with a seam ripper. So if you put this pin here, you can slit and you, you know, it kind of stops you from slicing it too far. So, but everybody probably has, I'm not having, there we go. I'm having a little focus issues today, I guess. <laughs> All right. There we, that's, that's pretty easy though. And there's how many buttonholes to choose from and... You, all you need to do is put your button in the little foot, in the foot as a guide, and the machine does the rest. Amazing. <laughs> and it always knows what size the buttonhole is, too. So then if you go from one to another to another, however many buttonholes you do, they will all be the same size as long as you have that button in the front. Yeah. Hey, so I'm going to have, do you want to have Jane, like, show, um, if there's no more questions on the buttonhole foot, have uh, Jane is going to show us, like, uh, that, uh, button sewing, the sewing, you know, the button foot to, that's the button sewing foot. <laughs> the button attachment <laughs> Okay, so uh, moving on from the button hole, now we're going to attach the button that. So um, this is what I want to talk about. This is the um, button hole or button attachment foot. And there's a couple things that I want to mention. You can see how I am holding this foot and the button is between these feet, right? So it holds the button in place while while it's while you're stitching. <clears throat> you don't have to tape it like um, you used to do in the old days. You used to maybe place the button where you wanted it and then place some tape there to hold it. You don't have to do that with this foot. Another thing that I wanted to mention is, oh, and again, you do attach it just like you would other brother attachment feet. You attach it right here with this shank. And then you can see that there's this little plastic knob on the side. There it is, plastic knob on the side. Now, what is this used for? Well, this can be slid forward. Let me try to 
slide that on camera. You can slide that forward. And what that does is it brings out this, um, this little finger here, a little lever, uh, shank lever. It brings that out. Now, what this is used for is if you have, if you're att attaching a button to say a wool jacket where the thickness is real thick, well, this adds a little bit of allowance so that when you stitch on this button, you it you can lift up on it after it's stitched and there'll be a little bit of extra um, allowance underneath the button so that when you're putting your jacket, buttoning it, it gives that allowance for the um, thickness of the fabric, if that makes sense. So in the old days, um, my mom would use a uh, a toothpick, right? She would lay a toothpick on the button and then stitch it so that you had that extra allowance underneath for the thickness of the fabric. I'm hoping I'm explaining that correctly. <laughs> I think you are. Okay, yeah. I see a couple I questions. I remember those old days and chain now that you bring that up. I remember that happening, <laughs> right? <laughs> the toothpick. <laughs> Now look at the toothpick we have. <laughs> yeah, it's all built into the foot, so that makes it really nice. Um, I'm trying to see if there's any questions as far as how this works, but I think um, Brenda will show that when she on the um, when she's demonstrating it, maybe. Definitely. So just a couple quick questions for you, um, just real quick, uh, Brenda. She want uh, Sally wants to know what machine you're using. So I am using the Luminaire um, with the Upgrade 2. All right. And Dalia says she's looking at that foot. And you, it's two pieces about the buttonhole foot. Not the button foot, but the buttonhole okay. foot. Let's not say that fast like 10 times. But she wanted to see that bottom piece. And do you have to sew with it? Uh, yes, you do. But do you want to just, do you have that next to you still? Or Jane, do you have it with you? Jane has it. So there are two pieces to this, which, there we go. So what is nice about this is that when your fabric is in between these two pieces, it helps it not slide. Now, I haven't been put into a situation where I've had to, um, where I've wanted to put it over far enough to where I couldn't use this bar. So I would guess, yes, you could use it without that bar, but to keep the fabric uh, moving as it should, I would use it if you can. Yeah, and also, Dalia, you'd want to have that on there simply because it's protecting your fabric from stretching out. And I haven't had a situation where I couldn't get my fabric in, and I've done like rows in a pillow and everything like that. Now, if you have an embroidery machine, you can also go into the button holes in the embroidery side, right? Which then, you know, you can, that's a whole nother can of worms, that, but you can space your button holes, you know, with your, um, in the embroidery side. I think that's another show. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. This is much better than a Tuesday. <laughs> yes, definitely. So, so, so Brenda, show us that foot. Okay. Um, I would love to. Where my little pointer go? Okay. Well, we'll use a new. Oh, there it is. Okay. So first, um, again, in that same category as our buttonholes. If you come down here, you have the button sewing switch, which is 4 2 3, and it just looks like a button. Uh, when you use it, it says button sewing stitch. Um, the other thing I want to point out here, of course, when we're sewing on a button, it is, um, you know, there is no length because you're sewing in place. Now, the width is default at 3.5, and most of the time, that works for like your basic buttons. I mean, I haven't had too many cases where I've had to change that, but we are gonna go to the machine and we're going to test it just a little bit to make sure that our needle isn't gonna hit the bo uh, button because we all know um, we don't want that to happen. <clears throat> so I'm gonna take you for another little ride here. All right. 
think we made it. Oops, there we go. Get in here so you can kind of see. Um, I have the buttonhole foot uh, or the button sewing foot on. And again, it snaps on and off like all of our feet do. Um, the button, as Jane already showed you, just fits, slides right in between. There's a little metal um, tongs or whatever right down here that holds your button on. This is the lever on the uh, right side there. That's for that shank. It's a shank lever. So if we're wanting to sew a button on for something, some thick fabric, say a wool coat or something like that, you definitely want to use that shank lever. Um, for what we're doing today, we'll just leave it the way it is. Um, before I start, I'm going to try to reach in front of the camera to the other side of my machine. You're going to take your hand wheel and you're going after you have your button on there. Take your hand wheel and slowly bring it down, moving the hand wheel towards you to make sure this needle is going to clear um, the button and go into that hole on the right side. So let me do that, and I apologize in advance when I get kind of in your way. Okay, so we're clearing that. I'm going to just go on down, and then it it's a zigzag, so it goes over to the other side. And I want to make sure now it's clearing the hole on the left side, and it did. So I feel pretty confident that we can go ahead and sew this button on. So we'll do that. Whoops, it wants me to, of course, put my presser foot down. See, it's wonderful. This machine doesn't let me do all the stupid things that I would do. <laughs> I'm, uh, I saw somebody comment, I would love to put buttonhole a button on by machine, I'm afraid. But what you showed first was to make sure you use the hand wheel to make sure that you're missing yes. the button. You're actually getting in the holes. That's the most important part. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to grab and just bring over this, you know, the project again and just show you if I can. Let me zoom out just a little bit because I'm a little far in. So this was our topper that we designed, as you saw. And, and now we fold it over. I've already add, added the buttonhole. Of course, I don't know if you can see it because of the fabric. Can you guys see it? Anyhow, the buttonhole. Here's our button sewn on. And I just kind of, when I put that on, I just kind of judged where I wanted it. But the thing I want to show you is this is going to go on, you know, my stove handle, right? Or maybe somebody's stove handle. I think this one's actually going to go on mine. but. <laughs> <coughs> excuse me and but I figured that you know if, if I use it and I will because it's just my normal thing to grab the towel on the stove and use it um I decided when I was stitching this button on is it goes through one cycle I just took and sewed a second cycle for extra durability when I was sewing the button on just something you can do we won't we don't need to do it today but I thought I wanted that nice and strong because I figured I'd be cooking a lot and using it. You know, that's funny you say that, Brenda, because when I add buttons onto my jackets or my pants, like for the front of the pants that gets a lot of use, you know, I always do yeah. a double. It only, you just press the button one more time. Like it just takes a exactly. second. It's already set up, you know, it's working. So all you have to do is set it up. And plus, like in this case, I used a um, different colored thread and, and I wanted to on the towel because I kind of actually wanted that detail of the thread. You know, we love I love thread and thread has a lot of detail. So see, I, I wanted it to be a little bit more pronounced, if you will. That's cute. So anyhow, it's so easy. It makes sewing on buttons. Um, and then you can take the threads, pull them to the back, kind of pull up your thread and pull it to the back. Self-threading needles if you want to get real technical. But once I sew it on twice, I'm not too worried. <laughs> That's great. Someone was asking, does that button, button foot and button hole foot come with the luminaire that you're showing there? Yes, ma'am. It sure does. Yes, it does. You bet. Um, and I, I can't tell you how long it took me to use that button sewing foot, but I love it because you can, you can literally sew a button on anywhere. You know, you decorate with them, embellish with them. They're just 
um, really, really, it's a wonderful foot. <laughs> hey, do you have any tips for Jan? She says, uh, what happens if you've got like a button with four holes? You know, you got the two and the two. Okay, so let me take you to my machine screen. I guess I'm at my machine. Um, Jan. And, or is it Jan? Jan. So if you go right in it up here to the, again, to that help menu, this is so cool, you know, um, go in here to buttons and it talks through a button, a sewing on your uh, four hole button. So I'm going to just take us to that page. Can we see that kind of? Oh, yes. Okay. So you're going to sew the two holes, right? And then slightly move it back. Get down here and sew the next two holes, and you'll you'll have a cross of thread across, you know, just a, a, a kind of cross itself, or you can cut thread and not have that cross there. Either way, that's going to be your choice. But very simple to do that. Just reposition just a tad bit. Check your check your alignment first before you start sewing, because <laughs> yeah, and that's I I love that video in there. I never even realized that one had the four holes. So you do the front. Two front holes yeah. first, and then reposition, and do your back. Talks. This, this has got so much information in it. Um, so if you're ever stumped about one of your feet or your one of the things, um, I mean, there it's talking about that shank lever. So that if you're, you know, sewing something, uh, a button on something thick, you can see the room it leaves between the button and the fabric if you use the lever. Yeah, definitely. So Julie says, can you show all the machines? So Julie, if you're talking about the whole luminaire, by the way, we've been showing this every live show. So uh, if you can't, like right now you're seeing the one screen, you've been seeing where she's sewing. Uh, she can probably give you a little view at the end of the whole machine. But if you're looking at anything with luminaire, go back and watch all the replays. We use this almost every time. <laughs> there you go. How's that? Brenda, it's a beautiful machine, and as somebody mentioned earlier, it's very, very quiet, and it, it does more than I'll ever know, probably, because it's it does so much. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, Jane, do you have any more towels up there? Oh, oh yes. I have been going to town. It's, uh, okay, so Thanksgiving, Christmas. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> uh, one of the things I did want to talk about before we go into uh, embellishments is um, how do you get your towel fabric? Well, you can purchase towel fabric. You can also purchase it like on a roll, right? You can go into your quilt store and purchase it on a roll, or you can purchase it by the yard, okay? Or you can just purchase towels in a package. So there's several ways of purchasing your um, towel fabric. The nice thing about purchasing it on a roll or by the yard is that you can customize to the length that you want for where you're putting it. Like if you're putting this in the bathroom and you're, you don't want it to hang too low, then you'll just shorten your towel. And so that makes it uh, nice too. Or you can just uh, take your towel and um, cut it shorter too. It, um, whatever matches your fabric is the way to go, really. <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah, so there's different ways of getting your fabric. The other thing that we wanted to talk about too is we'll go into the embellishment part, which is a lot of fun. And um, for, let's go to this guy. Down at the bottom, um, I just took part of the fabric from here and just added a little bit of um, color to the bottom part of this towel. Now, one of the other um, attachments that is my favorite is this bi-level foot. So this bi-level foot has, it's a little bit thicker. If I try to turn it just slightly maybe for you. There's a little bit thicker on this side. This bar right here is a little bit thicker than this part of the foot. So what is nice about this is that when you're putting, um, Let's use this one, a ribbon, 
right? So you can attach ribbon to the bottom of your towel. Or in this case, I just made my own from the um, matching fabric. This foot rides right along the edge of the fabric so that there's a different depth to where you're attaching the fabric. So it's it's thinner here and then thicker here. So that's the nice thing about this foot. The, the thinner part of the foot would ride right along and, and it makes for perfect uh, stitching, if you can see. So it's just like um, on your pants, your jeans, where you're stitching along where there's two levels of fabric and you want to make a real nice top stitch. This bi-level foot is wonderful, uh, an accessory for, for your sewing. That's really your sewing was beautiful too, Jane. Thank you. So I thought if that's a, if it's okay, I'll answer that question. She wanted to know if the quilting was done mm -hmm. uh, before the sewing. Before the yes. So the this topper, uh, you know, you saw that we did that in the hoop, designed it in Design Center, and then added the background field. So yes, we I did the quilting on two pieces, a front and the back, and then used that second open stitch to stitch them right sides together in the hoop, took it out of the hoop and trimmed it and pressed it or trimmed it, fold, um, turned it right side out and then pressed it and then added the towel. Um, and this towel was pretty long. It was like, um, I don't know, 28 inches and I really didn't want it that long and, and doubled. So I trimmed part of it off. So another good reason to get it by the yard, right? And this is a just a built-in, it's a built-in design on the Luminaire. So happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Can you believe it? <laughs> um, and then a couple months ago, we did a um, show on the Ruffle Foot, which was like a Ruffle Rama. We had a lot of fun. <laughs> so I had a lot of uh, ruffles and stuff, and I decided to add the ruffles down here. But again, like Jane was talking about the um, bi-level foot, I used it this time um, on adding the rib ribbon over the raw edge of the um, uh, ruffle. So the, it works really, really nice. And I doubt if you can see it that close up, but it, 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 I was impressed with my straight stitching. Oh, wait, it must have been the foot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Marsha wants to know, um, what do you ladies think is the best for the towels, 100% cotton, do you have a preference? I would say cotton because of the moisture, It, I mean, personally. Okay. I don't know what you're yeah. saying. I, um, I don't really have a preference because I have all types of towels. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Ooh. I went to several different stores. <laughs> Oh my word, Jane. <laughs> so it just depends. You know, go shop. And once you start shopping and you have an idea of that you want to do this as a gift, you buy a towel, you can get two of these out of one towel, right? So purchase one towel for, you know, a couple bucks or whatever, and then you can get two out of it. And then you can personalize it for whoever you're giving it to or whatever the occasion is. Uh, Jane, I want to be on your list for gifts. <laughs> <laughs> so when, um, I want to kind of go back to the um, maybe the fill stitch, which she was talking about. And so you stitch, pretend this one is filled with um, uh, the fill embroidery, a pretty design in the fill, right? In, in, in this one. And then this one would already be a piece that has been embroidered with that same fill. So if you change the size of it, like Brenda showed to 150%, then you're gonna wanna do the same thing for the piece of fabric that you're gonna use when you put them right sides together, right? So stitch out this one, like take the hoop, fill your hoop with a fill design and then you'll have a piece that's big enough to fit over this one 
And then you take this piece that has the fill on it, you know, and then you put them right size together, just like you would the, the solid plain fabric. So you can put as much time into this as you want. Um, like for this one here, um, which you can get little accessories to add with it if you're giving it a gift. And then down here is a little applique, a little ribbon. And of course, you know, you just take the fabric that matches and you cut a hole in the center. <laughs> and then you use that for your applique. That's wonderful. <laughs> Everybody loves this. Okay, back to the buy level foot. I had a few questions about that. Okay. Um, someone wants to know what is the letter on the foot and does it come with the machine? There is not a letter that's on the um, the foot, but the, and there are two that you can purchase. So where this thickness is would be on the other side. So there's a right and a left that you can purchase. They You can purchase them in one box, I believe, but the, most of the time they come in two different um, boxes. So it does not come with the machine. It's an accessory. But uh, I I really love this this foot. A lot, of people, a lot of people are saying they love this foot. And also what they're saying is that can this work on other machines then? So somebody who doesn't have the Luminaire, guess what? You might be in business. <laughs> yes, this does work with other machines. Yeah. You don't have to have the luminaire for for um, this foot. There you go. Uh, someone wants to know, is this also called the binding foot or is that something different? That's something different. A, a, a different show. Another day. <laughs> but that was a good question. Yeah. Brenda and I tried to, um, from when we started this uh, this year, we tried to bring in uh, an accessory or a foot that comes with a machine and maybe explain it a little bit more in depth on how you use it, give you kind of ideas on when you would use it so that um, uh, it's, you can take it out and start using it and, and, it, that's, and enjoy it. Make your life easier. Use the the pleating, the gathering foot, the pleating foot, or use the buttonhole foot or the button attachment foot. Why sit there and do it by hand when you when you can easily do it by the machine? All right, Brenda. You have so here are the bi level foots. If there is one. Let's see if I can get these close and in front of the camera. So we have a left and we have a right one. So that just means the. Um, the buy level, if you will, is on opposite sides, but uh, you could, it, so it depends on the application you're trying to do on to which one you're going to choose. And yes, they work on like any of the, the uh, snap on, um, if you will, um, ankles for your feet. So you, there's a lot of machines. I don't have a list, uh, a handy actually on, on all the machines that this will work on, but ask your brother dealer to, you know, check that out. I believe there's a lot of them though. Definitely. Everybody's saying, thank you. Great ideas. They love the towels. They love the happy Thanksgiving one. That was a great idea. Yes. And you know what? We've just had a lot of fun um, this year uh, working on the kitchen. I was just sitting here thinking about it after he mentioned it. You know, we've done placemats and pot holders and towels and more towels and more pot holders. Oh, yes. So a few people are asking a little bit later, but they want to know where the pattern was. And you actually created that in my design center. So in case you missed that, they took a hexagon and an oval, correct? Yes. <laughs> yes, I was muted there for a second. Yes, uh, hexagon, uh, octagon, and uh, an oval. There. And yes. I lost six-sided one, whatever that is, right? Or no, no, eight-sided. Never mind. Eight I yeah. Octagon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Shirley wants to know: Do you need? Do you really need both bi-level feet, or um, can you use one for everything? But you just explained it. One's on the right. One's on the left. It depends how you're sewing and eight which side. Right. Of so yeah, it depends on where you need to sew. Like if I'm, um, it, it would depend on your application. I'm 
mean, you can try, but you know how it is. We'll all need that second one eventually. <laughs> well, it also, it, you know, it depends where you're sewing, say, a ribbon on or something like that. Yes. Maybe yeah. Maybe if it's on this end and you're only working on something this wide, then you can sew down one side and flip it over. But if you're working on a bigger project, then it would be much easier to have the right and then the left. Yes. Correct. Good question, Shirley. Mm -hmm. All right. Do I see any other questions? I don't. Looks like everybody, unless I missed one, which I always apologize if I miss one. I scroll through these pretty quickly. Um, let me see what this one is. <laughs> how long? How long the topper is? Oh, yeah. So that measurement that you have for the, I you call it the paintbrush. I called it the rocket. Do you know what that is about the measurement from top to bottom? Um. Let me measure that for you. Well, I can see what the pattern size is on the machine, if you'd like. Vicki, I'm watching comments on Facebook and YouTube. I can see them on the crafting and the sewing side. So we are on four platforms right now. I see you. It finishes about 10 and a half inches. When I just laid this on the uh, mat, it's about 10 and a half inches. But again, it depends on where you're going to put it, right? If you're going to... Um, not need as much, you know, this doesn't have to be as tall. You can shorten that, make it a little bit less, you know, but, you know, to have enough room here so that it can actually go through a bar, right. then you're going to want it a little bit long, right? So that gives you some flexibility Sounds on where right. you're placing it. So the pattern was overall like... 10 and 10.62 by six and a half when we designed it in the design center. Right. Yeah. So Vicki, we were not going to show, I don't believe that they were planning on showing how they created the design. If you go back to you watch from the beginning, you'll see the design that she brought up and you'll see where you just erase in between the octagon and the oval. If, would you agree yeah. with that? Yeah, yes. our focus it was more not on how the design was created, but showing you the different um, feet and how to use those. So yeah. um, that's kind of where we was going. If we was going to show how to design it, that would be another hour show. <laughs> yeah. So you so I, do see, uh, I do see a question, what size who? Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I we used an 8 by 12 just have plenty of room around our design that was six and a half by 10.62. And I put um, actually two of them in the large hoop, the 10 and five eighths by 16. I put two of them in, kind of uh, angled them together. Oh, another thing that we were going to talk about too is um, some of the tips that we wanted to talk about. If you was going to do a directional fabric, watch mm -hmm. your direction and Brenda is, has a fine example of that. So I don't know, can you see that this is a directional fabric? Okay, so if I turn it to, the, that's the front side you're going to see, the back side you're going to see my pumpkins are upside down. But I wanted to place it this way so that when I folded it over and buttoned it, all of my pumpkins looked like they were going in the same direction. Um, so, you know, I have to tell you, Brenda, I've been working sewing with velvet for the last two weeks, and I'm thinking directional. Your fabric does not have directional. Now that totally makes sense. Otherwise, your pumpkins are going to be <laughs> upside down or your turkeys are going to be on their head. Right. So I had to, you know, I just made sure my front was going the direction, the right side, and then on the back, I just did the opposite direction. But I, I don't care. You know, it's going to be facing the stove. So I'd rather have it, them all going right on front. <laughs> That, I think, for anybody that dropped off and maybe they had to go back to lunch and missed the ending, this is probably the most important part of the whole lesson. Otherwise, they're going to be bringing these out for Thanksgiving, and everyone's going to wonder why their turkeys are on their head. We'll have okay, to come up for them. So the essay numbers, if anybody, I, I noticed somebody wanted them uh, yeah, on these What are they? SA one. one is SA103, which is the right, and SA104, which is the left. Okay, I'll put it in the comments so everybody can see. Okay. Uh, it says it's from Brother Sos, and uh, you're welcome, Vicki. Uh, you're welcome, you're welcome. And let me make sure I'm not missing anything else. Everybody's saying this is so much fun, but I think that last tip, 
I don't know how you're going to be that, but that was probably the most important part. <laughs> that was good. Remember there, Jane. Yeah. <laughs> So remember, if you do one for the holidays, you have Santa, make sure you have the reindeer facing the right way. This could make a whole different joke at Christmas. <laughs> and these can be made for any holiday or any time of the year, because you yeah. always need a dish towel. Mm -hmm. As I said at the towel. beginning of our, like, it's turned into a little series. Most everyone has a kitchen, so we're safe in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't use it very often, but I have one. But here I can tell you yeah. this. Now the fish, if you're doing one with fish, you're fine because the fish can face up or down. So if you're really worried, start with something like <laughs> simple. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's saying thank you, thank you. What a wonderful thing. Brilliant. Uh, you're welcome. Well, this has been a wonderful yeah. show. And as always, if you have questions, you can post them. Brother always goes back and monitors those after even after the live show. Ladies, do you have anything else you want to add? That was a lot of things in one one hour. Amazing. We covered quite a bit, three different feet and a project that we was trying to squeeze in for everyone. <laughs> it's a quick project and you want these quick projects when you're around the holiday season. Yes, yep. definitely. So and make uh, yourself one, everyone. Everyone make themselves one because You'll like it every time you walk in the kitchen and you, because you're going to think, oh, I got to do something this year. <laughs> well, besides me, you know, we get so busy coming these next couple of months. Well, the other thing is I actually put on here uh, Brothers Instagram, which you can see above. They love seeing what you're working on. So tag them. And down below, I have the Brothers Sews website. If you're looking for those feet, call your local brother dealer. And also there are new posts on the blog for sewing and crafting. Don't forget about your free design of the month. It's on iBroidery. And actually, I think it'd be perfect on one of these towels. It's pumpkin. I know. Did you use one of those, actually? They sure looked it, like it. You, you know, I didn't on this one. We talked about it. Um, we could bring that in and use that one, too. But we there were so many options to us, you know, <laughs> applique and ribbon. And we really wanted to show the feet. Absolutely. So go to iBroidery.com. The free design of the month is right on the front page. It's free to everyone. Uh, so if you go on there, I think it's through the end of the month. It'll be perfect for one of those towels. And I can't wait to see what you're working on. And it will fit the four by four hoop too. So it doesn't matter the size of the machine that you have. You can get that little um, pumpkin design and it'll fit the four by four hoop. Oh, gosh. Vicki, I missed the deals, the fall deals on machines. There's always more deals, by the way, Vicki. Call your local brother dealer because uh, they each one might have something different. But yes, there's always more deals. So make sure you check with your with your dealer. All right. And a great time of the year to find some really good deals actually is coming up. So holidays are coming, so stay tuned. Don't we all know that in about a week that's like when everything in the whole planet goes on sale? <laughs> I think. Yeah. Usually, at least. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you so much. If you have more questions, just let us know. In the meantime, brother, we sure appreciate you letting us take over your page uh, with your brand ambassadors, your educators. Oh, by the way, I'm going to give you a little hint of something we're working on for speaking of the holidays. We're going to have a whole group of people join like you all loved last year. Jane, I don't want to give it away, but could you just hold up what you're going to be showing? I am hoping to be talking about these little um, napkins. They are so cute. Those okay. are so cute. And open one up because you all are going to just like be amazed when you see this. And yes, you will have to be showing this. This is the cutest thing I've ever seen. So oh it's, this is the, um, the napkin. And then it just folds in to this cute tree that you Adorable. can put next to your plate with you know your silverware on top or whatever and i just was like i need to make one of these i just love it <laughs> i love that so i will let you all know the date it's going to be in december we're going to have a big uh brother educator bash i think that's going to be fantastic so stay tuned for that ladies this has been great my kitchen is looking better and better every time you're <laughs> joining us along with everyone else and everyone have a great day thank you Bye. Bye. 
upsize your creativity with the all-new all-smart Innovus NQ1700E, only from your friends at Brother. Demo one at your Brother dealer today.